Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to create a 2D uh, block detail element uh, so that you can use it in your detail sections, uh, a concrete block. So uh, the benefit of using a, a, a detail item is it's taggable and it uh, it's much, much quicker than creating regions and, and so on in your 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 sections. So let's just go into a section. I'll show you the Revit out of the box uh, solution for this. So in your annotate tab, if you want to in, uh, insert a 2D element, a detail element, we do it from the annotate tab. Okay, so there's a component button here and the ribbon, we click that and we get our list of detail families. Uh, I'll show you the lightweight block that they have. Now it's fine, it just has the wrong hatch convention, you could fix that I guess, or uh, and it also has no color. But I want to, for the exercise, I want to create one from scratch, okay? So go to your file menu, Uh, new family, okay. So not project. Click new family, and that opens up the template library. We want to create a detailed element, so we go to metric detail item, okay, and open. Now again, this is just two D geometry. There's no three D view here. What we have is our x and y planes, and where they intersect is the point where uh, this family is going to be placed when you place it in, in your project. Uh, you can change that, but for now, that's what it is. Okay, so let's just save this. Save it as in your own folder, family. Revit. Twenty two. Create a new folder detail. Items. I'm going to file this one under masonry. Folder masonry. Good practice to organize your folders correctly because they'll fill up pretty quick and you don't know where to find anything. So in masonry, I'm going to call it my concrete block. Okay. Right. So we need to create constraints so that we will be able to push and pull concrete block so in our create tab click on reference plane and one across the top one down here one across here and i'll explain what these are for now so the distance you're using my dimension tool from here to here that's the height of our mortar and our block okay i'm going to select that dimension uh, in the modify tab we get an option to create a parameter so click on the create parameter button and i'm going to call that mortar height I don't want these to be type parameters. I want to use instance parameters. So I'm going to change that to instance. Okay. Dimensions is already set, length and so on. You can leave that as it is and click OK. Dimension again. I'm going to dimension from this reference plane to this one. This is going to be the, the, this is going to be the height of my block. So escape, escape, select the dimension. Same process. Click on create parameter. Call this one block height. And change it from type to instance. Okay. And once again, uh, escape, escape, use your dimension tool again and go from your Y axis to this guy over here. Escape, escape, select your dimension and click on create parameter again, same process. And we call this one block width. Again, change from type to instance and okay. All right, now they're obviously the wrong sizes but we'll come back to that in a minute. In the create tab, uh, find filled region and let's find one that's close to what we have. Okay, so I'm going to select the solid fill black and I'm going to edit, type, and duplicate. I'm just going to call it block hatch. Okay. Now, the background fill, I'm going to make that as a solid pattern. So click in here, select solid fill, and OK. For the color, I'm going to change it from black to a gray color. Uh, let me see, something light. 247. 7, 247. Okay. I click OK. And the foreground fill pattern, I'm going to make the cross line diagonal up. Uh, what size is that? Let's edit that and see. Five millimeters. I'm going to I'm going to duplicate that using the duplicate button here. I'm going to call it diagonal up three millimeters. I'm going to change the line spacing from five to three millimeters. 
and OK. And for the color of that, I'm going to give it a dark gray, 128. 128, 128, 128, and OK. And masking's already, you can't change it actually, it's set there. OK. I'm going to use my rectangle tool. You could use pick lines as well. And I'm going to grab from the corners of these reference planes and lock, 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 lock. Have to lock it, OK? And OK. Escape, escape. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to create the mortar hatch. So filled region in your create tab, filled region. Uh, what do we have here? Hmm. What's gypsum like? Okay, I'm going to duplicate gypsum. Call it uh, mortar. Okay. So change the pattern to. You could actually leave it at that, but. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at the gypsum plaster pattern. And I'm going to change the color to, again, dark gray. 128, 128, 128. And OK. And leave that as masking ticked. Yes. OK. Now this time, I'm going to pick tool and lock bottom reference plane, this guy here. Now I'm going to use my align and lock tool. Align. I pick that reference plane, find the point unlock it do the same over here unlock that one i'm going to pick this reference pane i pick that point unlock i'll do the same one last time lock okay now i'm going to create a curved line an arc okay i'm going to pick these two points and just pull it out like that this one this one pull it out like that That's probably not going to work now when I change the depth of my mortar. So change that to 10 millimeters. Got yes, it's perfect. Okay. That's what we want it to look like. And we're going to change our block height. Because we want it to if whatever we load it in as, because it's an instance parameter, it's going to be that every time we want to place it. So we'll just make it right. One five, our block width. We can put some extra controls on this. Uh, let me see. Let's, you may not always want the mortar, okay? So I'm going to select the mortar. And on your properties tab over here, you have a visibility parameter. It's ticked on. If I click into the box beside it to associate family parameter, there's none there. There's no visibility parameter in the family already. So I'm going to create one here. New. I'm going to call it mortar is, okay? And I'm going to make that an instance parameter as well. And okay. And okay. All right. So we have a block ready to go in. That's it. So load and project can close. Save it. Yes. And I'm going to go to section and place it there on our wall. There it is. See? Escape, escape. We can grab that and copy it up. See? And again, it's taggable. Now, there's no information in it yet, but you, you fill the information into that block and anywhere you use it, you can tag it. And that's the same for any two, 2D elements, uh, families that you load. Um, let's just do a thermal block as well, because we're kind of, we've done the hard work. We just need to change a little bit of this family here to make a thermal block, okay? So, select it. Uh, edit family. I'm going to save it as thermal block now, okay? So file, save as family. I'm just going to call it my thermal block. Okay, save. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to change the color and the pattern, okay? Uh, I just do something that kind of seems obvious to me, which is to make it look like a, a warm color. So I'm going to Edit type of block hatch, and I'm going to change it to uh, the background color. I'm going to change it to something that looks warm. <laughs> it's going to change it to, let's see, 255, 204 by 204. OK, it's kind of a soft red, pinky sort of. And I'm going to change my uh, cross hatch, sorry, my, my diagonal hatch to a cross hatch. There's one here, OK, so masonry concrete block. Let's see what size that is. It's uh, I'm going to change that to three, just to be the same. 
three, three, and okay. Okay, okay. There's a thermal block. Same process. Load into project and close. Save it, yes. And now we have a thermal block. Didn't place it there, but uh, again, in your detail sections, these are taggable elements so that you don't have to write notes over and over. You can assign different uh, types of your thermal block. You can have two, three, four, five, whatever you want. So you'd have a thermal block that laps your floor insulation with a note in it saying lap floor insulation and wrap and DVC or moisture resistant thermal block, et cetera, et cetera. And you might have a different one to lap the, the roof insulation. But it's the same family, but different types within the family. And maybe we'll discuss that another day. Give it a try and I hope you enjoy it. If you found this useful, Give it a like and uh, subscribe and you'll be updated when new videos are released. Thanks, guys.